Hello, my name is Sanj Sarati. I'm a stand-up comedian, public speaker, and frontman for a political punk band. I've been performing on stage for over 25 years, have won many awards, and now consult to help many people learn the important skills they need to get up on stage. Some of my clients are CEOs at huge corporations, looking for the confidence to present in front of thousands of people. And some of my clients are people looking to muster up the courage to get up and do their first ever stand-up show in front of a few friends. I believe that stage presence is an important aspect to any live performance or public speaking. Your delivery and connection with the audience can be the make or break moment for any event. Throughout my professional career, I've been asked, how come I have so much stage presence on stage? And how do I combat nerves? So I've created the Stage Presence Podcast as a tool to help those in need of the ability to bring up the courage to get up on stage. This podcast is split up into six parts, and this is part two, and part two is called Confidence on Stage. Hello, guys, and welcome back to the Stage Presence Podcast. And I'm really happy to announce that we have a sponsor for this podcast. And that company is called GL Pro UK. They're a content creation entity. If you're a content creator, you're likely to want to concentrate on things that you do best. That's where GL Pro UK comes in. They love helping content creators take the next step by supporting and helping them with the boring and time consuming tasks. So you can concentrate on important things like creating content. Get in touch with them today for an audit of your content process. They love to hear from you um, and they'd love to hear from anyone that's a content creator. Myself as Sam Sarati, I'm super proud to have these guys sponsoring this podcast. But yeah, get in contact with them today. I'll put a link down in the liner notes or if you're watching this on YouTube, it'll be down in the bottom and you can get in contact with them on www.glpro.co dot uk forward slash stage presence forward slash i also just want to say thank you to all those that messaged me after i did the first episode i got so much positive feedback from people i've never even met before one of the coolest ones was from sven the lead singer from a great rock band called dirty rose who said that this stage presence podcast was helping him develop his stage presence sven you don't need this podcast you are a champ for those of you listening Check out Dirty Rose on Instagram at Dirty Rose Rocks. They're a really awesome band. Um, if you're into like new school classic rock, check them out. Yeah, just going back to episode one, I mean, when listening to it, I felt quite kind of ambivalent about what it would create. But what I'm really happy about is just, just the, the positive feedback. There's so many people coming back to me saying that, you know, this, this podcast helped them, which is great, which is great news. Yeah. Also, um, I forgot to plug myself on the last podcast. So anyone that's listening to this who doesn't know me, if you want to find uh, me on Twitter or Instagram, I am on at Sanj Sarati, which is S-A-N-J-S-U-R-A-T-I. Um, and that's both on Twitter and Instagram. And, and please share and subscribe this podcast. Anyway, let's kick off with part two, which is confidence on stage. There's going to be three words that I'm going to focus on during this podcast. First one is fearless. Second one is conviction. And the last one is open. So I'm going to talk about those. So the first one is fearless. So developing confidence on stage isn't a simple thing for many people. Um, initially, there's lots of things that go through your mind when you're uh, preparing yourself to do something on stage, whether it's present, uh, whether it's to perform, um, or whether it's just simply to talk to someone. And one of those things that holds a lot of people back is fear. Now, fear, generally speaking, is the mind killer. It is that thought of, of what could go wrong if you were about to do something. Now, I'm not a qualified psychologist. So I'm not going to go into depth about the problems of fear. But one of the key things that I like to focus on when helping my clients develop 
the skills to get up on stage is to help them to become fearless. Now, telling someone to become fearless is a very simple thing to say, but actually helping someone to become fearless can be quite difficult. One of the extremes I've noticed when helping my clients to become fearless on stage is when they start to get scared and they start to develop things like heart palpitations. Um, They start to hyperventilate. They start to get really terrified of getting up on stage and doing something. So I try to work with the person to think about why they are getting scared to go up on stage. And there's lots of reasons for them to develop fear about going on stage. And I try to kind of help them diffuse those fears by making them think about other things. Think about who you are and what you are uh, when you go up on stage. Now, when someone goes up on stage, they are completely naked to the audience. Now, that's quite an interesting thing to say. Now, being naked on stage from a metaphorical perspective is me highlighting that you and everything about you can be seen by everyone in that audience. Now, a lot of the clients that I work with, when I highlight that to them, start to get even more scared. Now, when you're on stage, everything that can be seen of you on stage is noticed by everyone in the audience. Now, that might sound terrifying, but highlighting that and understanding that will allow you to respect the art form of being on stage. And it should really help you to think about the perspective of someone that's watching you while you're on stage. There's a really good lyric from a guy called Henry Rollins on a tool song called Bottom. If you've got a chance to listen to it, listen to it. It's on their first full-length album, which is called Undertow. Henry Rollins has a guest appearance on there where he, he does a monologue and he talks about, he starts to talk about this terminology called being naked and fearless. And if you're naked, if you're truly naked and everyone can see everything on you and you are fearless at your most naked point, then you can overcome anything. And I use that term whenever I'm in bands, before we go up on stage, I always say to the band, right, don't forget, we are naked and fearless. And that goes back to what I was saying. When you're on stage, that nakedness is everyone can see everything you do on stage. So if you make a mistake or if you show a crack of insecurity on stage, everyone in the audience will notice that. So how do you overcome that? Well, you know, don't crack. Just accept the fact that everything about you on stage can be seen and value that, you know, don't worry about the fact that you look nervous or you've said something wrong or you've done something wrong. Just focus on the fact that you're there, that people are listening and move forward. And that should help you to overcome your fear. And there's lots of other things you know, that you can be afraid of when you're on stage. And that fear can stem from anything. You know, uh, will I hurt myself? As long as you're rehearsed, you can get on and do what you need to do. What does the crowd think of me? Don't worry about the crowd. You don't know them and they don't know you. They're there to listen. Don't think about what they're thinking. It's just not worth it. As soon as you start to think about that, your mind will start to go crazy. When you're on stage, that art is craft work and that craft work is a discipline and that discipline must be respected, not just by the audience, but also by you. Just focus on what you're doing on stage and try to get from A to B in the most professional way possible. So going back to the three words that I spoke about before, fearless, conviction and open. Conviction. Conviction is a very important aspect of performing life because it stems from the belief of what you're doing on stage. So if you're in a band, you're with the band, 
and you're performing as a unit to present the songs in the most believable way possible with the most conviction. And there's some fantastic bands that I listen to who do that on stage. One of them I mentioned before, Tool, uh, Maynard James Keenan. He's one of the biggest influences on me as a, as a rock singer. He's just got no fear on stage. And not only is he fearless, but he also disrupts how people generally perceive rock singers on stage. You know, because there are certain views of how a rock singer can be. And he's actually very unique and very different. Another one, um, a classic, fantastic singer, probably one of the most important stage performers on stage is Mick Jagger. You know, if you ever see him like on video or on, on, you know, on stage, he's a fantastic show person. Someone in our current era, Dua Lipa. If you ever see Dua Lipa on stage, she performs with conviction. She's got so much confidence on stage. If you get a chance, try and find some live videos of them or go, go and see them live and watch them and just see how they, they have the crowd in the palm of their hands. Another person, and I thought I'd mention him just because he has to be mentioned, is Freddie Mercury. What an incredible front person on stage. So much, so much confidence. And again, he was an artist that had to deal with a lot of provocation. And I'm sure he had, you know, he was scared of that and had fear and had to overcome that fear. So conviction is very important. If you're singing lyrics, you have to show that emotion. And that emotion will be transcribed into confidence on stage. You know, if you're singing about something painful or sad, or even if you're just being happy, do it from the heart. If you're doing stand-up comedy, the art form twists a little bit because that conviction needs to stem into what it is that you're saying so that it's believable. But you also need to gauge the crowd as well. You have to listen to how the crowd is reacting, because ultimately you're, you're trying to make them laugh. In a corporate setting, that's very different. I mean, you still have conviction in what you're presenting, but sometimes the crowd doesn't really give you much with regards to how they are reacting to how you're performing. It may be that they're really into what you're saying, but they're keeping their cards close to their chest for various reasons. So it's a little bit different. It was also a lot harder to gauge the audience. But again, it goes back to what we were saying initially when we were focusing on fear. Don't worry about what they were thinking. Just get from A to B in the clearest and most professional way, even in comedy and music. With comedy, you're connecting with an audience to make them laugh. With music, you're part of a team, even as a solo artist, that is expressing a vision that should inspire the audience. And I feel in corporate speaking, those two things kind of work in the same way. However, the reaction is a little bit different. So think about pauses. Always pause to think before you react. This works very well in corporate speaking and also in comedy because you're kind of gauging the audience, but you're also preparing yourself to get to the next stage. In music, it's a little bit harder because you're reacting on the continuum. However, try to gauge the audience between your songs and think about how to react and where to pause. It's hard sometimes because you have a certain amount of time and you have to engage with your songs or your uh, material in a certain time frame. The same with corporate speaking as well. However, pauses can be really effective and can help you take control of the scenario. There's nothing wrong with pausing. You know, if you need to think about what you're saying, just stop and think about it. It allow you to show that you have control, that you're fearless, and it allow you to prepare yourself so that you can deliver whatever it is you need to deliver with conviction. So now I'm going to focus on openness. 
Now, when I talk about openness with regards to confidence on stage, I'm talking about your mindset being open to whatever is thrown at you. Now, when I say whatever is thrown at you, it could be anything. It could be someone throwing a bottle at you. Now, I hope that doesn't happen. It's never happened to me and it shouldn't happen, but that's an extreme. Or it could be how someone's view is thrown at you or how someone says something to you. Now, in the comedy sphere, you sometimes engage with hecklers, people that are saying something that kind of puts you off your flow. Usually hecklers say something negative and you need to kind of prepare yourself. How do you deal with someone like that? The same in corporate speaking. I've done lots of corporate conferences where there's somebody in the audience that wants to say something, wants to engage. Um, and you need to be mindful of A, how to respect what they're saying, but also respect the rest of the audience so that that person is not taking the direction of whatever it is that you're presenting in another direction. And there's nothing wrong with being firm with that person. You could say, that's awesome. I understand what you're saying. Can we move forward? Because I've got a lot to say. Or it's great what you're saying, but is there a question? I want to answer that question so that the audience gets the benefit of what you're trying to say. In the comedy sphere, you meet all sorts of hecklers. Some of them are just really drunk and they need to be kind of controlled uh, quickly so that you can make them part of the show, which is a good thing, and then move forward so that you can finish your show. In the music space, it's a little bit different because when you're in the vibe of your song, uh, you're kind of commanding the audience. However, sometimes there could be someone in the audience that could instigate a negative atmosphere within the space. So you just need to know how to handle them. I usually try to make it um, a jovial moment. I try to be open to what they're saying and then move forward. Um, I've been to shows where comedians have been really nasty to hecklers um, and try to make an example of them. I don't think that's the right way to move forward in a show because it goes against some of the things that I spoke about in the last podcast, which is, you know, you want to engage and inspire that person that's in the audience so that, you know, they leave and think positively of the experience. So think about that. But the other thing is be open to a bad performance. You know, it may be that you do a bad comedy set or a bad music show or even a bad presentation. The best way to handle it is to just move forward. One of my favourite rock singers, a guy called Ozzy Osbourne, I went to see him in 96 at Donington's Monsters of Rock Festival and I watched an interview with him after the show where he was talking about how when you do a show, the show ends there. Don't worry about, you know, who played what or who didn't do what right or whatever. Just move forward and learn from that mistake. You know, just look at how the performance went, highlight the things that you weren't happy with and learn from them and move forward. When I was a rock musician, I learned about openness from just playing as many shows as possible. Now, when I started, I was very vulnerable in my thoughts. So I would leave a bad show thinking like I was the worst performer ever, but it allowed me to learn from my mistakes to highlight that mistake and to become a better musician, a better performer. And that development helped me become a better stand-up comedian. When I started in stand-up, there were lots of stand-up comedians who were a lot younger than me who had to deal with the pressures of how a bad performance can affect them. And because I'd been in the music circle for a long time, I was already prepared for that. And I think the more you get up in front of people the more that fear will start to disappear, the more your conviction will start to grow and the more open you are to making a mistake on stage. Sometimes those mistakes can make a show even better. Um, so be open to them. 
Be open to what people have to say. Be open to landing flat on your face. Be open to a microphone not working. Be open to the power failing. Be open to an audience that's not open to you. Really learn from that openness because it'll allow you to be more confident on stage. So I'm just going to touch on a little bit of a tangent with regards to openness as a performer. Now, to me, a lot of what I'm saying about stage presence and being someone on stage sounds like a science. And I just want to highlight that there is an aspect to being a performer that is very spiritual. And I mean that from a positive point of view. When you're on stage, when you're commanding an audience or when you're engaging with an audience, you're starting to open yourself up as something that could potentially inspire those that are listening to you. Now, that's a spiritual thing. That's a beautiful thing. And it's one aspect of the art form that I believe should be respected a little bit more and also thought about a little bit more. When I started as a performance artist, as a musician, I was into just one thing and that was just rocking out. And when I say rocking out, I mean getting up on stage and screaming as loud as I could and, you know, engaging with that audience and just really loving being a rock star. Now, that led me to a lot of excesses, um, lots of late nights, and that was cool. But now the art form of performing on stage for me is more of a spiritual thing. I do it now because I love it. I do it because I want to connect with the audience. I also do it because sometimes it doesn't work. And when it doesn't work, it makes me learn a lot more about myself. And it's helped me to become an open person, to have conversations with people, you know, during the performance or after the performance or before the performance. You know, when you're doing a conference somewhere where there's going to be a lot of people and that event company starts to present you as someone that's going to be speaking at that conference, you start to get people researching you, looking at what you're about and trying to figure out what you're going to be like when you get up on stage, you know, what value you have for them. And then you get people who watch you. Some of them love you. Some of them don't love you. And then you get people after the performance who come up to you and want to engage with you. The majority of them will say something positive, but there'll be a few of those people that will say something negative. And I think if you're open to those conversations at every level, before, during and after, you're going to develop into a confident person that can get up on stage and not worry about what other people are thinking, what they're saying or how they react to your performance. So destroy that fear, develop that conviction, that belief in what you're going to say, and be open to the reaction. So I hope you enjoyed this session of the Stage Presence podcast. Please do join us for episode three, which will be focused on eye contact. I love you guys. Till next time, be good. <laughs>